I just bought a sweet new piece of test equipment, Hewlett Packard HP 8920A. As many of you would know, I already own a HP, or an Agilent actually, A8924C test set. That's a big, big uh, boy. That's like 30 kilos, it weighs an absolute ton. And I've been after one of these for ages and I got one the other day. Um, I appeared on Josh's stream, Ham Radio Crash Course, and we were talking about service monitors. And I mentioned that I was after one of these and someone actually sent me an email and said, hey, there's one available here and uh, I picked it up. So requires a little bit of TLC, let's power it up. As you can see, there's a little bit of burn in on the CRT screen here. You could just see the outline of some of the menus. These have an old CRT display in them. They do have a video output out the back, but it's some weird kind of uh, sync rate. So you need a video converter, which I don't have. I'm looking at maybe getting one. It, it is, it's a composite output, but you can't just put it into like any old capture card because it won't, uh, it won't work. So I'm looking at maybe getting some sort of LCD replacement. I might get a video capture card if I can that will convert it, uh, but you have to have a special one that can deal with the sync rate. I think it's like 19 and a half kilohertz or something like that. The CRT in it, I mean, it's, it's not too bad. As you can see, it's actually quite readable here at the moment. If I go though to the menu, it's on intensity level eight, which is the highest intensity. And that's like, I can, you can't really read it until you get to like maybe seven and yeah, eight's the max. So it's, uh, it's getting a little bit, a little bit aged. So anyway, LCD replacement, I think it's about 350 bucks US or something to do. So I think I'm gonna look at that. I've got to open it up and do a little bit of a, a clean out. This thing's actually got a tracking generator in it too. So that's great for being able to sweep filters and stuff. And what I've got here on the bench at the moment is this PA and this two meter repeater was uh, not giving up enough output power. So what I've done is I've just been playing around with this driver module here. I've got a new one that I've just placed in and uh, been tuning it up. It's now doing 50 watts again. And I, I love this too, because you can't quite see the things in the way, but it does do 60 watts continuous in straight into the front. Before I had to use one of these, a. Uh, a through line dummy load, which is what rated for 50 watts. This thing used to get like super, super hot as well, sitting on the front of that one, because that only did three watts input. But this has got the full 60 watts in, so I'm really happy with this. This thing is a lot less, uh, it doesn't weigh as much as you can see. There's a bit of a scale difference there compared to that. So what can you actually do with this? I, I brought this to my radio club the other day and a couple of other people were like, hey, well, what is it actually good for? So at the moment I'm on the receive screen. So what this can do is, is it can do a number of things. Let's just have a look. Um, you've got an RF generator in here, so you can output a, a signal or an RF signal. If I go down to amplitude there, I can adjust the amplitude in dBm. Uh, here I've got an output port. So at the moment it's on the RF, uh, input and output but I can also select the duplex port as well. You can generate tones at a certain deviation or level. Um, I've got a second one here for a subtone that you can also generate. It's got filters in there so that you can actually um, measure um, certain, uh, you can actually filter out certain frequencies. It's got a cyanide meter here too so I can measure the signal to noise um, ratio distortion so for 12 dB cyanide. If I was to input um, some audio from say a radio into one of these inputs here, then I'd be able to measure the, the input uh, here as well. You can also change units. So if I go up to dBm here, and then I select say millivolts, that changes it to millivolts. Um, I can change it to, uh, no, microvolts is wrong. I can change it to volts. Um, dBm, etc. So that's, uh, that's the receive screen. If we actually go to TX, this is the transmit uh, screen where I can actually measure frequency error. So there is in the back here a high frequency stability reference. It's actually really good, it's 10 megahertz. So I can actually plug in a GPS that has a 10 megahertz output straight into this and, uh, and then I can um, do accurate frequency measurement. It'll do transmit power as well in watts. Um, FM deviation and distortion, if I actually come up here too, I can select distortion and I can select um, uh, SNR meter, I can select audio frequency, uh, DC level current, etc. So it does 
all of those measurements as well. So yeah, I can choose the frequency that I want. Again, what input port. So the maximum input that you can have in on these two ports is 200 milliwatts. Uh, but um, the, uh, sorry, on that port, on this port 60 watts, so you've got the high power input, but you can select antenna and you can use this as an off-air receiver. Let's tune in a local radio station. And there we go. Now we've got some music, so I better turn that down for, for copyright. But there you go, it's receiving. And uh, yeah, you can use it as an off-air receiver as well. It'll also do, so it's on FM demodulation at the moment. We can select AM, SSB, it'll do audio in. Um, you can also have external modulation in too. Uh, mic modulation, filtering again, de-emphasis, all this sort of stuff. So that's the TX screen. Not only that, you can also click duplex. And this is actually the transmit and receive um, screens in one. So what you can do is you can test something like a repeater like this. You can inject a signal out of the duplex port into the repeater. And then out of the RF, you can then um, come into this port here. And then you can adjust your amplitude and your levels and all that sort of stuff at the same time. You don't have to flick between the screens to do that, which is really, really handy as well. Um, not only that, this thing's also got in it a couple of other functions as well. Um, one is an oscilloscope as well, so you can actually plug in a uh, probe into the audio and we can measure the, um, the, we can have a look on an oscilloscope what the waveform of the audio actually looks like, if it's uh, looking good. It'll also do other stuff such as, I think it'll do, I think it'll encode, I think it'll encode DTMF and that's on... CTCSS, yeah, DTMF, CTCSS, a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Um, I've never really used those functions myself. Um, it will do a decode as well. I wonder if it'll actually decode. I've never used these functions, but I'm assuming it'll de decode DTMF. So there you go. Um, if I actually transmit. So it'll do that. Let's go to Spectrum Analyzer as well. It has a full Spectrum Analyzer in, built in here where, there we go, so you can see there's my, there's my Spectrum. If I try transmitting just on my two meter radio, I don't know if it's gonna pick it up or not. And we plug our antenna back in. And there we go, there's our transmitter which is transmitting on, uh, on two meters. It's got an RF generator on the spectrum analyzer where you can actually also select tracking as well. So it'll, it'll do fixed, so you can have a fixed frequency, or if you click tracking, it'll actually track um, at the, across the screen here. And then we can um, connect the, uh, what port are we on? Duplex, duplex out. And then we go back to our, ante our input antenna port. So I could connect a filter across here and I could measure the filter as well. Um, there's all sorts of markers and other bits and pieces in here too that you use to calibrate this up, but it comes in very, very handy. So the thing I wanted to just basically point out was is how handy one of these little uh, test sets are. You can get tiny SAs, uh, which is just a spectrum analyzer, but it doesn't include all of the analog functions like the uh, receiver testing and the transmitter testing in it. I can actually also put in a microphone input in here as well. I can measure the audio output as well. So it does, a whole heap of stuff. Um, if you can get hold of one of these, usually you'll find them for sale at you know various uh, maybe swap meets, or you might also have a communications business that might not require one anymore. So if you can get hold of one, then they're uh, they're essential for like doing standard easy measurements on radios and stuff. So if you can get hold of one, then definitely uh, definitely snap it, snaffle it up and don't let it get away. One of the benefits of these communication test sets is, is that you can measure spurious emissions coming from your radios and you can see if they actually comply with the FCC's requirements, such as these radios right here. I've done some measurements on those. If you wanna see the results of that, then there is a couple of videos that will pop up on the screen. So click those right now.